he didn't, what do you think? What? Who? What? Oh! They're in there. There's people. They're looking at us. Oh, man, look at that look guy. At... Hi, I'm Comic Book Man, yeah. and this is... Uh, this is good old JR. You know that guy there? Put yeah. some pants on. Oh, uh, yeah. God! Pants. Yeah. We're here today. We're here today talking about actually doing a movie review yes. on Star Trek. I haven't seen it. I have. He has. Yes. So he'll be talking about it. I'll be playing the skeptic and he'll be playing the pod from Invasion of the Body Snatchers, <laughs> who was won over by it and thinks it's the best thing in the world. So tell me, JR, how is Star Trek like I haven't read your review okay, on the website I, or on I Facebook? Have, well, yeah, if you haven't read my review on Facebook or on the website, hi, how you doing? Hi. Uh, I really like the film a lot, but I have to preface this first by saying I am an old school Star Trek fan. Uh, don't get scared, everybody, but I'm a, a, a novel reading, toy buying, convention, convention going, not in a long time, but a convention going Star Trek fan. Kirk Kissen? So, yeah, I like, I like, yeah, I'm a Kirk Kissen fan. He but has a bumpy head at home. I do. And the ears and everything. And he goes to he goes to Kmart and he goes, wah, wah, nah, nah, and they look at him like he's nuts. Every day I go to work, I look at my boss and I say, today is a good day to die. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, well, you're in the right place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so uh, already. Be, be qualifying that by saying I'm an old school Star Trek fan, I went into this film, as you will at some point, uh, skeptical and a little bit concerned about, the, about the, uh, the, the thing near and dear to my heart. But I have to say, J.J. Abrams had a thankless task of taking the concept of Star Trek, which was uh, in a self-imposed cultural exile for the last 10 years, and breathing some life to, into it, and he does it really well. This movie takes the toys in the box and throws them up in the air, and they all fall down quite nicely. It's, the film does, a, does something I didn't think they could do, and that's make the original series seem fresh again. Um, the characters, we, we go back to the beginning. This is an alternate reality, by the way, not this comic book store, but the, the movie takes place in an alternate reality. It doesn't wipe out anything that's happened in the previous series. It's just another little avenue to work on. So, so it's a time travel thing. They go back into the past. They correct. create a new, like going back in the past. They create a new timeline. That is so correct. So it doesn't wipe out anything that's happened previously, but it starts everything afresh, fresh in a different, again. different reality, different timeline. And what's really hard to do, and Abrams does it, is he makes it appealing not just to me, the old school fan, because there's slogs to the fans in there too, little lines of dialogue and and things like that, but makes it appealing to the non-fan, and that's hard to do because in this, uh, for the last what eight or ten years. Being a Star Trek fan has been akin to being a leper. And now, with this, yeah, I'm, exactly, I'm, I'm peeling as we speak, <laughs> scabbing. <laughs> but what it's done is, and if you, any of you have seen the first week box office receipts, first weekend, and from people I've talked to at work, families are going to see this. Women are going to see it and enjoying it. So Abrams has done a nice job with uh, bringing this into the public consciousness again and doing it in a good way. Some lip service has been paid to maybe it's not quite as Gene Roddenberry-esque in the respect of it's not a morality play like Gene Roddenberry Star Trek used to be, but it's so damn entertaining, this movie. It's extremely entertaining from the, from the first frame on, the first scene. Everything is done in the service of creating an emotional hook for all these characters you know, and it works pretty well in that respect. My big problem with it is, having not seen it yet, is I'm just worried about how stupid it is. It's how not, much they dumbed it down for it, this movie, it, which it's an action film, yeah. and there, there it's, it's being shoehorned into the mold of an action film from what I've seen. Yeah. So how dumb does that make it compared it, to what's happened before? Well, there are relative levels of dumbness. I would not call this film dumb in a Transformers sort of way. Yeah, well, it's, that's sort of what I was getting at. Everything in this movie is done in the service of the characters. This, even the special effects are done in the service of the characters. The, the plot line, it's all a character piece yeah. and that's very star trek that's very gene roddenberry um i never found it to be stupid yeah uh it's just very entertaining and it's an action film but it's never dumb i never felt insulted by anything that goes on sure it has a couple of script problems getting people from planet a to planet b in some unconvenient or very convenient sort of ways mm. that uh, play a little fast and loose with science but uh, overall and the characters are all well cast this is a really well cast film real quick how's the acting the acting's good. Uh, one of the ones you would be most concerned about is Chris Pine playing Kirk. Yeah. Is it going to be an impression? Is it going to turn into a Saturday Night Live skit? No. Pine Pine brings the hubris and the bravado, but also a lot of humanity and humor to the role. And there's little Kirk-esque touches to his voice, but nothing that seems like it's uh, a caricature in any way. Are you saying he took the character farther than William Shatner ever did? Oh, maybe, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and Zachary Kinto, Siler from Heroes as, yeah. as Spock, uh, maybe has the toughest job because he acts alongside, well, not alongside, but in the same film with 
Spock Prime, as he's called in the movie, Leonard yeah. Nimoy. I'm not spoiling anything because this has been out all over the place. Um, so his job is the hardest and comparatively spot on as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, but overall, I would, uh, I'm would i highly recommending it. Star Trek fans, non-Star Trek fans, for those of you that are hate Star Trek, I have a feeling you're going to like this movie. Okay. And go see it, would you? Oh, when I get a Come chance. On. I'm going to go. i got to get a chance to go see it. <sighs> Anyway, you can read his full review, which it's goes on forever yes. in a day, but it's really good uh, well, at, at the website, at WW, well, he's a good writer, at www.myalternatereality.com. Be sure to check it out. I've also posted it up on the Facebook page for the store if you haven't, if you don't want to go to the website, but you're on Facebook. And thanks for the comments, people, on and, my review. I appreciate and it. And you can't get out of Facebook hell. Just look it up, look it up on, on the store's website. And otherwise, that's it for me. Yes. And that's it from you. Me. Okay, yeah. see you next time. Okay, bye. Put some pants on, Yeah, you. get those pants on, man. Looking at people's junk.